Welcome back guys, this is Automotive Anonymous. That is the all new 2024 third gen Subaru Crosstrek. It's in a color that I like to call gray. And today we're gonna to talk about the five things I hate about it. If you can't tell it's a 24, well you should be able to just look at the way it is. By that I mean it has the extra cladding of course, and then it shares the functional ventilation with the WRX, which is a pretty good place to slice your cheese or put your fingers through. And if you guys follow my channel, you know I had a premium Crosstrek for a couple years and 40,000 miles. I've also driven about a dozen of them in reviews, so I have a pretty good understanding of the platform. And therefore, today's video on the five things I hate is going to be a little bit more in depth, less about the global Subaru platform in general, trying to keep it pretty focused on the third generation Crosstrek, but also have characteristics of all the Crosstreks in general. And then I want to know your comments below. Tell me if I'm right, tell me if I'm wrong, tell me your thoughts and why you are not as favorable about your Subaru Crosstrek. And keep in mind in general, I think Subarus and Crosstreks are a fantastic bang for the buck because they offer a lot of safety features, creature comforts, and pretty decent gas mileage for having a good ground clearance all-wheel drive little SUV. So whether you live in northern climates, the Pacific Northwest, or anywhere like that, these are very common. And thankfully, Subaru's keeping them overall pretty affordable. I do want to say, though, big shout out to the Twin Falls Subaru for letting me borrow it for the day. I'll link it below if you're interested in checking out their inventory. They're good guys to work with, but it's time to carry on with the review. The first thing I hate about this all new third generation is it's hardly an update. I've seen mid generation refreshes of other vehicles have more change than this silly thing. Does it mean it's not a good vehicle? Absolutely not. The Crosstrek platform didn't have a lot to improve on, but for the third generation, you're really not getting a lot more. Sure, you're getting LED headlights that are very bright on the premium, whereas before you could only get those on the limited, but the body lines are basically the same. So is the ground clearance, cargo capacity, wheel size, all the things like that. You lost the CD player, which for some might be an upgrade. For others is a hit, something that we were sad to see go. You can't get a manual transmission anymore. Thankfully, the CVT is now the eight simulated gears, which does feel a little bit smoother than the previous generation. And there's gonna be a wilderness trim level, but honestly, there's not a lot that's changed for this third generation. The door panels are basically identical in their design, just slightly different materials, like for the cloth door cards. The seats have lightly been revised. They're still very comfortable, as were the outgoing ones. But overall, it looks very much the same, same dashboard, steering wheel, basically. Not a lot has changed for this third generation. Same thing with the back seat. It is nice that you now get the armrest in the middle, but otherwise features are roughly the same as they've always been in the Crosstrek. And the cargo capacity is still about 20 cubic feet with the seats down mid fifties if you drop the back row. And there you have the 11.6 inch screen, which replaces the six and a half or the upgraded eight inch screen on the outgoing one, which also had a CD player. So if you want a CD player, go find a 2023. Some of the other touring trim levels of other Subaru models have a CD player in the center console. Maybe someday that will come out for the Crosstrek. But right now, you don't have a CD player when you have the big screen. Modern safety. The second thing I hate about the Crosstrek is the power that it offers. Full throttle from the two liter. It's very sad. Sure, it's in intelligent mode. All sport mode does is basically drop down a simulated gear, giving you better initial throttle response, but it's not gonna make the vehicle drastically faster. And from a, a revved, launch zero to 60 it's actually no faster in my gps testing i've driven a lot of these two liters and the 2.5 the 2.5 makes 30 more horse which is absolutely should be standard equipment in my opinion where i live density altitude sometimes hits 7500 feet that's the equivalent of being about a mile and a third above sea level so the vehicles are slow i honestly don't look at what they are rated on the magazine on the website because you're not likely going to actually hit those numbers the two liter, in my experience, hits zero to 60 during the summer months when the air's hot and there's humidity and things like that. In 12 to 13 seconds, the two and a half liter boxer might hit it in about 10 seconds, but I know that's a lot faster than cars used to be. Heck, the old muscle cars could only hit zero to 60 in seven or eight seconds if they were lucky. But modern vehicles are a lot faster. EVs hitting 60 in four seconds, even big trucks doing it in six seconds. Even though this is faster than vehicles used to be, it has to stay relevant, it has to stay up to par with what the rest of the road is offering. And I really wish Subaru would offer us a better power plant. Even the Hyundais and the Kias have the 200 horse 1.6 liter turbo, which would do better at altitude, plus having more power and way more low in torque. 
The Mazda CX-30 Turbo has 250 horse, 320 torque, and it's basically the same size and competitor to this. So there is competition in the same ballpark price that offer drastically more power. And if you wanna be safe, if you have to go around tractors, farm equipment, semis, things like that, where you can see, you know, potentially living out in the country like this, that is a huge safety concern and something that you need to take in consideration. The third thing I hate about the Subaru Crosstrek is the safety systems and the creature comforts are a little bit on the adolescent side compared to the other Subaru models. It does have the upgraded three camera eyesight system, which is really nice, but still there's no heads up display. The old system would just kind of bounce you back and forth three typical times before it kicks it off, but it wasn't as mature, so it would bounce you too aggressively. And then sometimes the other side lane couldn't compensate and you would just coast right on out. Of course, you guys always need to have your hands on the wheel never trust the system but just know that it was not as good as the outback the forester the ascend things like that additionally the heated seats and this one do feel a little bit better today but that's because we're in the 60s and actually feels hotter than that in the sun when i drove the 2024 white one for my review last week i still wasn't very impressed with the heated seats compared to other subarus but honestly, just compared to other vehicle manufacturers in general, Subaru heated seats seem to be on the very conservative side for how warm they make your bum. The fourth thing I hate about the Crosstrek is where is the plug-in hybrid and EV solution that's actually better than the regular one? There's only four trim levels currently out for the 2024 model year. That doesn't even include the wilderness that will pop up on the website soon, I'm sure. But the last generation of the Crosstrek had a hybrid. It was about 10 grand more than the Limited, and it sucked, honestly. It barely got better highway mileage. It got a little bit better in the city, but you're paying an extra 10 grand. You're losing five or six cubic feet of storage in the back, and it weighs hundreds of pounds more, and you don't get a spare tire. So explain to me how that trade-off seems worth it for anyone, which is honestly why they only sold a couple thousand units of those, and why there's a lot of them sitting on the lot from what I've heard and what I've seen. I do think that Subaru could make a really good plug-in hybrid, but do it with maybe their Toyota partnership technology. Make it better, make it more powerful, which the hybrid second-gen Crosstrek was not. Maybe more so than the two liter, but it was slower than the two and a half liter in my testing. So make us an affordable plug-in hybrid that's maybe low 30s, a full EV that's in the upper 30s that competes against things like the Nissan Leaf, the Chevy Bolt, I know the Crosstrek is thought of as a little bit higher up vehicle than that, but it's still kind of an economy class car. It's basically a lifted Impreza, so keep perspective there. And Subaru offers a fast EV Crosstrek for under 40 grand and a fast, very capable, very long distance running plug-in hybrid for low 30s. If you guys agree, give me a thumbs up on this video. The fifth and final thing that I hate about the all new Crosstrek is what options it has when you get the highest trim level, the limited. You're already spending over 30 grand for the standard, no option limited. And now think about what the limited legacy, Outback, Four Star, and Ascend offer. They offer a lot of high-end features, but when you're paying over 30 grand for the limited Crosstrek, you get leather seats, which are nice. You get the 10-way power adjustment driver seat, which is also a good option. And you get all the rear cross traffic alert, braking, and blind spot monitoring. But you know what you have to pay extra for? You still have to pay for the moonroof. You still have to pay separately for the Harman Kardon speakers. I feel like those things should come standard on a limited cross track and not get you into the low mid 30,000 range. From where you think you're going to be fully loaded at 30 grand, check out the website if you think I'm lying. Anyways guys, my hate list is now over, so I think we can go back to being friends, but I do wanna hear your thoughts and opinions on if I was right, if I was wrong, and what your preferences are in the comments below. So tell me, did Subaru do really good with this, or are there things that you wish they did better or differently? I definitely wanna know them in the comments. And then if you like the video, consider liking the video. If you wanna see more of my Subaru stuff or any of the other stuff I post on my channel, please consider subscribing to Bookmark It. And otherwise, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Don't forget, if you're interested in this vehicle, you can check out the dealer below. And I also have a full review of the premium Crosstrek, and there'll be more Crosstrek reviews to come. Take care, guys.